let's look at, these are all sorts of advanced technologies with imaging. I mentioned that there's spectral imaging with lights, there's photoacoustic with lights and sound, there's uh, uh, near infrared, far infrared imaging, there's, uh, uh, let's see, all sorts of types of optical imaging now. As a matter of fact, let me show you something. This is, this is an optical uh, imaging system for, uh, for cancer, for the uh, cancer of the tongue. These are small things. This is a $12,000 device that, that looks at a tumor. Also, let me mention that we have now portable ultrasound devices that can be used on uh, remote locations. When we, were when we were doing the COVID imaging, we had firefighters who tested positive for COVID, but they weren't sick. We gave them portable machines at home. They put the, they put the probe on their lungs and on their heart and on their liver and kidneys twice a day for two weeks. And if nothing happened, they went back to work. So the imaging is now better portable and we're using other things like optical imaging, which is going to be the future optical imaging treatment. Okay, let's look at what we can do. So a cyst will have a low oxygen saturation. This is all optical technology. A melanoma will have high vascularity. We can see, we can measure this again, non-invasively, spectroscopically, with many, many different kinds of technology. So there's not one horse in the stable. There are, there are many varieties of cancer diagnostic and treatment options available. Where I trained in melanoma, melanoma imaging was in, in, in France and in Germany. So the Dr. Lassau was the world's expert in melanoma imaging. This is a CT scan with a tumor. Notice the contrast enhanced blood flow, which shows tumor vessels. Now these are micro vessels. This is like looking at capillaries technology. This is extraordinary accurate and very simple technology. This will probably be used more often in pediatrics. We're talking about using it in pediatric myocarditis because of the, um, the scare from the, the COVID and the, the COVID vaccines. We have a size, we have a size, and more importantly, a blood flow. Day 42, there's no blood flow in the tumor and the tumor's gotten larger on the CT. So quantify before you do anything. Now, Jimena Wartsman has written three textbooks on skin cancer ultrasound textbooks. And she teaches this all over the world. Uh, Jimena is sent to uh, Dubai, for example, to, to treat and to, to China to teach people in uh, using Doppler blood flow in the, in the nail and in the skin. What do you do with something like this? I bump my finger. Is it a, uh, is it a bruise? Otherwise you have to cut the nail off and leave a scar and then the nail will regrow crooked and it'll take us half a year before the nail returns to normal, if ever. If there's no, tumor, blood flow, it's not aggressive. So the more tumor blood flow in melanoma, and this happens to be in the nail, the more aggressive it is. So this is a biomarker. Blood flow is a biomarker, if you will, for cancer aggression. Another biomarker, this is showing this is prise de contrast is fascia in French. With MRI, 
we can see if the tumor has spread to the lymph nodes, uh, the draining uh, lymphatic system. The reason for a lot of tumor recurrence, prostate, breast, skin, especially skin cancer, is you didn't get it all. So if you image first with ultrasound, or this is um, high resolution MRI without contrast, we see things very quickly and you can tell the patient, we probably got it all. Uh, Orlando Catalano, he's head of the Italian National Cancer Institute and is again, one of the world's other experts in, in melanoma. He did most of this work. By the way, I'm a, the only American member of the International Dermis Society, Dermal Ultrasound Society. We're in, we're in five continents and uh, very few people are doing it in the United States yet. So we can see if the, the melanoma has spread or not. Remember melanoma metastasis can show up five years later, 25 years later. It's, it's a nasty disease, so you really wanna get all of it and check patients periodically to screen them to make sure, make sure you got everything or didn't miss something that you can't feel. Here's an example. The, this mass, there's a, a gland here with seven millimeters, but there's a three millimeter area that looks abnormal. When you put on the blood flow, only one millimeter of this area is filled with cancer and you can't feel this. So we scan and now instead of cutting these things out, we stick a biopsy needle in to check if it's really a tumor. And more often than not, after we stick the biopsy needle in and get diagnostic contents, we're putting the laser or cryo needle, the freezing needle in and destroying it at the same time. This is how we've been treating many cancers now with image guidance. The, by the way, the image guided uh, dermatologic test textbook was, uh, it was published in uh, 2000, um, last year actually by Springer. So let's go back. We can find skin cancer. Maybe what causes cancer? So we're changing topics. What causes cancer? And how do you find what causes cancer? How do you measure the cancer potential in the body? Because our ultrasound technology in the skin has become so accurate, we have technology that shows, well, well, here it is. Here are bumps on the skin. This is three millimeters. This is as thin as a dime, this section on the skin. And there's a white dot here. We have, I'm sorry, this is, 0 0.3 millimeters. It's less than a millimeter of intradermal tissue. Now, th this is like paper, thin. This is a regular sonogram showing something abnormal. We have a button on the scan that does 4D imaging. So it takes a slice through this. It takes the 200 pictures through this plane and you get one, two, three, four. You get multiple white images. Now, we call this starry night because when you're scanning, it looks like stars, they, 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 they sparkle as you move the probe. This is a fellow from Long Island who was exposed to uranium. It was in his well water and it, it deposited intradermally. So we have ways to measure toxins 
we see this in patients from uh, Philadelphia, New Jersey, uh, upstate New York, uh, Connecticut, because when they're exposed to toxins, either from the air, the drinking water, or from 9-11, we now have a way of looking at potential uh, carcinogenesis in the body. Mm -hmm.